Good evening, everyone. This is Dawn. Thank you for joining this webinar brought to you by ASQ Innovation Division. The topic of tonight's webinar is how to measure the success of a product. Building and launching a product in the marketplace is often seen as the ultimate goal of product managers or people in that role. Execution is the mantra, and people are rewarded when the product finally hits the market. Measuring the performance of the product is then an afterthought, often sparked by the need to understand the lack of traction. In this webinar, it will be discussed why you should include customer metrics and telemetry in your product, why measuring the performance of a great product should be part of the plan from the beginning, and how to ensure that you deliver a great product with an awesome customer experience. The learning objectives are Describe how the role of a product manager expands execution, customer focus, and measurement of outcomes. Explain the concept of the delivery gap and how to minimize it. Incorporate metrics that focus on outcomes rather than output. Build a product with quality and incorporate the right metrics to validate it. Describe how measuring performance of a product requires planning from the start. Please note that this webinar is recorded and the recording will be available on ASQ Innovation Division YouTube channel. Also, there will be five to 10 minute time after the presentation for questions and answers. Please post your questions in the Q&A section of the WebEx tool. Tonight, our presenter is Mr. Valerio Zanini. Thank you very much, Valerio, for accepting to be our speaker today. A product innovator and digital leader, Valerio Zanini is passionate about creating products that customers love. With more than 20 years of professional experience spanning software development, system integration, agile transformation, design thinking, and product innovation, he excels at building new products in the early stages of product innovation when uncertainty and lack of a clear solution are the biggest challenges. He's the founder and CEO of the digital innovation firm, Five Division, with offices in Washington, D.C., and Rome, Italy. He provides consulting and training to organizations of any size, helping them become more innovative with product mastering, agile methodologies, and design thinking. He's a certified Scrum professional and a Scrum master, state program consultant, and certified product owner. He's also certified IDEO design thinking. He holds an MBA from the University of Maryland and an MSBS degree in electronic and computer engineering from the University of Rome, Italy. He's the author of the book, Deliver Great Products That Customers Love, published in 2018. Now I would like to hand over to Valerio Zanini. Valerio, please take it away. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. In this uh, webinar, we are going to talk about uh, how to measure great products, and this is a topic that is very dear to me, because in my job, when I help companies build uh, better products, great products, I often ask the question, how am I sure this is a great product? And usually this question comes too late, after the product has already been built or uh, is uh, in development. And I think a lot of the answers about this question should come much earlier. For example, when we are doing discovery with customers so that we can incorporate uh, how we are gonna measure the outcomes right during the discovery. So this was a quick uh, introduction and I'm gonna jump uh, right into the topic. <clears throat> the first uh, question I would like for uh, all of you to think about is what is a great product? And I have a few ideas here. Is it one that uh, has great features like this one, this product here, or maybe lacks usability? Is it one that works well, like the picnic pants? Is it one of these uh, beautiful, like uh, a Ferrari? One that has awesome technology, like the Segway? 
which was a, a marvel of technology when it came out about 10, 12 years ago, but received very poor market acceptance by customers? Or is it one that comes with a good price, like this one? Actually, all of these may be characteristics of great products, and yet all these examples, except one, actually the Ferrari one, all these examples have struggled to be successful in the marketplace. So I would like to stop here, and uh, I think we are not going to use the chat function for this webinar, but I would like to spend uh, a, a few seconds here to give you time to think about what are the characteristics of a great product. Can you think about two or three things that come to mind about what makes a great product? I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about that and then we jump into the next uh, slide. <clears throat> this to ground the conversation. So assuming everybody has come up with a couple of ideas on what makes a great product, I'm gonna jump into the next slide. And here are three recent examples of what people think are great products. One is Uber, one is Tesla, one is uh, the never ending story of uh, Disney, Disneyland. And all of these have common characteristics, if you think about it. They, have, uh, they deliver great customer experience. They share beauty and design. They have a very strong brand identity, possibly an ecosystem of partners, suppliers, and so on. They have some magic, Tesla, Disney, maybe even Uber. They all deliver a little bit of magic in their experience, and they have more. So when we think about uh, a great product, uh, here is a definition that I like to share. A product is the aggregate of tangible and intangible attribu attributes that deliver benefits to the customer and solve a specific need. On the left side, we have an example of tangibles. And in particular, this is what the product does. So think about features, technology, design, form, or these are tangible attributes of their product. On the opposite end, we have intangibles. How does it make me feel? These are things you cannot really touch, but they need to be part of the value proposition of the product to deliver a complete customer experience, such as emotional elements, brand identity, an ecosystem, and that little bit of magic that always makes a product more successful. Together, the tangible and intangible elements, they deliver value to the customer. And this, I think, is uh, the, the end measurement of a great product is when we are able to deliver value. So we're gonna, deep, gonna uh, dig deeper into this uh, topic throughout the webinar. This was a quick uh, introduction. <clears throat> the next thing I want to talk about uh, is uh, the three primary responsibilities of a product manager. Now I call it a product manager. This may be a formal title of a person in an organization, maybe an informal role. In general, this is somebody who is responsible for creating a product or a service for their organization. This could be an entrepreneur, could be a product leader, could be a product owner, and so on. In general, this person has three responsibilities. The first one is understand the customer, the, the customer needs, the problem you're trying to solve, and so on. Then drive product development, making sure that we can actually build a product to solve those needs. And finally, measuring the outcomes of what we are delivering to the customer and whether or not we satisfy those needs. These are three primary responsibilities, and in general, they should be pretty balanced for, the, for a product manager to be able to deliver a great product. The reality is often it looks like this. We undervalue the understanding the customer 
in measuring the outcomes, and we focus too much on the execution, on driving pro development. Not that execution is bad, we need execution. But the, the problem is when we focus too much, we risk of uh, forgetting who we are building the, the, the product for, which is the customer, and what kind of problem we are trying to solve. And of course, we don't measure the outcomes, and we risk building the wrong product. So maintaining a balance is very, very important. And now we're gonna talk about how we do that. <clears throat> so I think there are three major areas that we need, as product managers, we need to measure. The first one is the business metrics. Basically, are we delivering business results? Then there is a, a second area called the customer metrics. Are we delivering outcomes? And then finally, telemetry metrics. Is this thing even working? So we're gonna dig uh, deep uh, into one, each one of these throughout the webinar. The first one is of course the business metrics. When uh, I, I read the survey uh, a couple of few weeks ago <clears throat> and uh, where they asked uh, executives throughout the companies and in different industry, what was the one single metric that they were mostly interested in? And about 85% uh, of these executives replied EPS, earning per share, probably because uh, their uh, stock compensation is uh, uh, tied to the performance of the company, of course, earning per share, so they keep uh, a very good eye on that measure. But certainly the earning per share is a business metric that is very, very common uh, across uh, industries. <clears throat> the second one is revenue. The, the problem needs to generate revenue. So for, of course we want to keep an eye on that. But then there are other, another group of uh, metrics that are business metrics often looked at like uh, user acquisition, page views, if it is an online product or website, unique users and returning users. Sometimes the cost of acquisition is too high. We want to make sure that we actually have a sustainable business by having returning users. So measuring these things can be very, very important to achieving business stability and business success. There are different ways to look at uh, metrics. I'm gonna share a couple of examples here. One is called the pirate metrics, A-A-R-R-R-R. -R -R -R. <clears throat> and basically this is the funnel. Think about an online product, online service. Usually customers go through the, these five different stages. The first one is uh, acquisition. How do the users even find us? How do they get to know that we exist? And then when finally they land on our product, how do they register? How do they activate their account? And then do they come back? So retention is very, very important. But even if they have registered and doing activities on this uh, service, are they even paying for that service? So are we generating any revenue? And then finally, do we have uh, referrals? Are they inviting other people word of mouth and so on, to join the service as well. And that is ambassadors for us. So all these five metrics throughout the funnel can be very, very important to measure and make sure that we are, the users are working through the funnel in a way that we expect and there are no bottlenecks that we may need to address in order to improve the funnel. Another way to look at metrics is the HART framework from Google that comes from uh, the five initials of measuring happiness. This is an idea of the idea of measuring uh, the user attitudes and often this is collected by a survey to have a little bit of a way to quantify this in terms of satisfaction is used. Net promoter score is a big measure of this. Engagement, how much are they using our service? Frequency, intensity, depth of interaction, and so on. Adoption, new users, are they creating accounts and so on? Retention, are they coming back? And then finally, task success, are they able to do what they came to our product to actually do? 
and this also can be very, very important as a measure of uh, customer, su uh, su customer satisfaction and uh, can drive uh, all the other uh, measures that came before this. So we we'll look at this uh, too. And I'm going to share a little bit of a story because just by looking at metrics doesn't mean that we are, first of all, looking at the right metrics, and second, that we are actually making the right decisions. So this is a real story. This is a company I worked for many years ago where I was the head of product. And before I joined, the company had been on a roller coaster. They, they were running very high, being successful, for many, many years, up to a point where things started to dwindle down. Google was a big uh, competitor at the time. Other co companies were uh, showing up in the marketplace. And uh, we were uh, struggling to retain our uh, market share. And we were slowly, slowly going down. We did not know why. And uh, we resorted to what the company has always done before, which was uh, Google Analytics. So we started looking at metrics, and in particular, we looked at uh, page views, registered users, bounce rate, uh, all these kind of things. And we realized that our website was, uh, our funnel on the website was not working well. So we embarked in a long project, it lasted more than six months, so very expensive for the company, to redesign the website and improve the conversion funnel. At the end of the project, we actually measured the results and we saw that we had almost double the rate of registered users and we had a drop of 10% in the inbound rate, which for us was massive. It was massive achievement, so we celebrated the, the, the result. Yet, just a few weeks later, when we kept measuring, we noticed that despite having more users and despite having a better website, our revenue was flat. All these new users were not spending money. We realized that we were actually measuring the wrong thing. By, reg by measuring registered users and bounce rate, we were not looking at the right measure. In particular, we had lost focus of our customers and we were just looking at analytics instead of talking to the customers and understanding what they were looking to do on our service, why re they registered and why they didn't buy. We never asked those questions and we failed to understand the root cause of the problem. So I like to share this quote, which I think uh, really resonates with this example. Most people use analytics the way a drunk uses a lamp post for support rather than illumination. Sometimes we are so enamored with uh, the way we have done things or with uh, metrics that we personally care about that we are looking for these metrics to improve and grow, so, so for support, rather than looking at the right metrics that could really give us some light into the right things to fix or improve. One example is actually the Moneyball uh, story. That's a, I think it's a great movie. It really highlights the point about finding the right metrics. In uh, baseball, every team, I think everybody's familiar with the story, but the point is in baseball, every team always looked at the same metrics, and uh, this team chose to look at something different, something that was unusual, something that for them was more significant. And because they did that, they were able to hire professional players at a cheaper cost. They were actually better performing in the games. So the team was able to grow and, and win over the others. So the question for you, to really think about and, and answer is, uh, does your metric directly correlate to the value your product delivers to your customers and your business? The point is, are we measuring what really matters? And in particular, are we measuring output or are we measuring outcomes? What the customers expect from your product? 
And there is this nice concept of vanity metrics, and that's the page views or the register uses of the example before. These are metrics that may show some value, they may show some improvement and so on, but in the end, they don't drive the real outcomes that the business is looking for, and so they are just vanity. So here is a little uh, worksheet to help you think about uh, how to choose the right metrics that work for you. I think there are three major steps. The first one is the goal. Start with your objective in mind, what you want to achieve, what is your business objective that you want to achieve. Then define the outcomes. What outcomes will make us get closer to the goal. And then finally, based on these outcomes, decide what metric do we need to measure to make sure that we are achieving that result or we are driving the right behavior toward the right outcome. And I want to share a quick example here. So for example, is a restaurant that wants to increase the revenue. That's their goal. They can do that in different ways. So for example, possible outcomes could be ability to attract new customers or increase uh, returning customers or change menu. All of these three things could be things that they can do and each one of those would result possibly in, in an increase in revenue, so in the goal. Of course, they realize they cannot do all of this at once, so they choose one of them. In particular, they choose the outcome of increasing returning customers. And now they start running small experiments to see what they can change, improve in the customer experience so that the customers are coming back. They decide to measure that with small exper experiments, and based on the results, they, they know if they are up to something that works or they need to keep searching for something different. And in particular, this can be done in rapid cycles so that we don't need to spend weeks or months in uh, building something, but we can test one metric at a time, run small experiments, and really iterate to lower the risk and improve the outcome. So the next uh, question for us is, how do we measure value to our customers? <clears throat> And in particular, I want to talk about customer metrics. So there are a few different ways that we can do that. Uh, the first one is hypothesis-driven development, building MVPs, minimum viable products, listening to the voice of the customer, measuring NPS, net promoter score, and then of course, evaluating market solution fit. So all, all, all these could be ways for us to validate if we are delivering outcomes to our customers. Now, as a, as a society in general, I work with a lot of, of technical companies, but this uh, I think is true throughout uh, industries. We have become increasingly better and increasingly faster at building products. A lot of practices like Agile, DevOps, Lean Startup with the Build, Measure, Learn, MVPs, Design Thinking, Rapid Prototyping, all of these are uh, become great practices to really speed up the time it takes for uh, a new product to come to light. So we can go from idea to launch in a shorter and shorter time frame, reducing our risk. The problem is, uh, and I think this is a uh, getting stronger and stronger the faster that we get through the process is where is the customer? The goal is to go from idea to customer and we risk by, by focusing so much on the practices, on the execution, we risk losing focus on really the, the customer and the outcomes that you want to deliver. So the big question I usually ask to the companies I work with is, uh, can you articulate who the customer is, what they need, 
a why they buy your product? Often I find that answering this question is not as straightforward as I would expect. And usually this is the result of uh, skipping the discovery dimension. The discovery is when we work with customers to understand their problems, their needs and opportunities for us in the marketplace. And what I find is that we tend to, to sometimes to shortcut the discovery and jumping straight to the design of a solution. We get enamored maybe with uh, a solution. We are convinced that's the right one and we get into executing and developing that solution we re without really focusing too much of validating the solution with, uh, with customers. And by the time that we are done and we get to the customers, maybe too late. And in fact, what I find is that companies fall into what I call the delivery gap. So by focusing on the execution, we try to get to deployment as quickly as possible. We want to get the product out in the market. We want to sell it. We want to make it available. So the focus is on getting the product out, which is an output. Instead, what customers really care about is that we're able to satisfy their needs. We are able to deliver a customer experience value. We are able to deliver outcomes. And the gap is between delivering outputs versus delivery outcomes. That's the delivery gap. And when companies fall into that gap, they cannot really deliver value to their customers. So the goal will be to identify this gap and then close it as soon as possible in the development process so that we are able to deliver the outcomes that customers are really expecting. So the question becomes, how do we do that? <clears throat> and there are many ways that we can do that. So here is, a, here is an example. So first of all, measuring delivery on time, on budget, scope, quality, etc. These are traditional measurements that teams and organizations really, really care about. These are important. They are okay. We, we need to have uh, these kind of measures. There is no successful business they can run without measuring budget, for example, or quality. Make sure that quality is uh, always delivered the highest quality possible and so on. But do these matter if people don't want your product? Are these the real important things? I believe they're not. And as much as they are important, the focus should be on value delivered. So the outcomes that we deliver to the customers. One example of how we can do that and measure that is called innovation accounting. This was a concept introduced by Eric Ries in the Lean Startup book in 2011. It basically goes through these uh, four uh, steps. The first one is uh, establish a baseline metric where we are today. Then establish a target, a desired outcome. What do we want to deliver to the customers? And then we build an MVP, a minimum viral product to, to validate the hypothesis we be behind our outcome and whether or not we are able to deliver that outcome to the customers. We launch the MVP in market and we measure the progress toward that outcome. And if we are successful, that's great. And we repeat the process for the next piece and so on. And if we are not successful, then there is an opportunity to learn from that and possibly pivot to a different idea, a better idea, and then repeat the process again. By doing this, we minimize the risk of building the wrong thing. We deliver in, uh, in rapid iterations and we maximize the chance of delivering outcomes the customer's value. So when I look at a product development uh, uh, pipeline, <clears throat> there are five dimensions that are true for any product. The first one is uh, discover, where we focus on the 
customer needs, customer problems, the opportunities. The second one is design, where we ideate solution and we seek, maybe through rapid prototyping, some validation and so on, we seek to find the best possible solution to solve those problems. Then we finally develop the product, we deploy that in a market and we deliver outcomes to the customers and we measure if you are delivering this. The key here is that this should not be a linear progression of phases, but instead should be a continuous cycle where we do a little bit of discovery, a little bit of design, develop and deploy, deliver, we measure what we got, and then we go back to discovery and so on. And in particular, we measure value that we deliver to the customers all the way throughout each of these dimensions to make sure that we are delivering the outcomes that they expect. So I, I spent some time and I developed this, uh, what I call the five dimension canvas, where for each of the dimensions, I list a different, um, a list of tools, this list of practices that teams can adopt to support that dimension, and in particular, to incorporate customer feedback and customer validation at each of the dimensions. This uh, canvas is available for download either through the website or uh, if you want to scan the uh, QR code here on the screen or take a screenshot, you can download it and print it on your own and, and, and use it for, uh, for your own project and uh, product. <clears throat> the next uh, uh, topic or type of metric I want to talk about is the uh, telemetry metrics. And then beside the customer metrics, which I'm really passionate about, the telemetry metrics are very dear to me because this is usually something, that, not usually, something that I often see teams and organization forget about. And again, in that hurry to develop a product and get out in the market, we forget telemetry and we forget the ability for us to measure. So how do we know if once we have deployed the product in market, if that product is working? So we have a lot of different ways that we can measure that system and security logs, real-time telemetry, test and retest, the flow breakpoints, team delivery chart, and so on. And the reality is that problems can arise at any time. And we need to be ready to be able to identify these problems and then fix them as quick as possible to be able to deliver the right uh, experience to the customers. So we're gonna talk a little bit of, uh, of telemetry metrics, and in particular, I would like to share a few examples here. <clears throat> the first one is really a question for you. Think about NASA, when they were launching Apollo missions to the moon, or even today, when they are launching International Space Station mission and so on, would you launch your product without any way to measure its performance? So think about launching the astronauts in a capsule to the moon and without any communication back to Earth, any telemetry. You guys are on your own. You go, land on the moon, come back, talk to you in a week. That sounds very scary, I think. And in fact, they, NASA at the time, they had thousands of telemetry metrics they were measuring to really support the astronauts. And most of the mission was actually conducted here on Earth because of all those me measurements. So I think that really applies as an example to our product. And uh, here are a few examples of th things that they measured uh, at NASA. Um, this really applies to, as an example, to our products. So if, for example, you are developing a digital product, like an online product, this could be a screenshot for your metrics, for your telemetry. This comes directly from Splunk, which is a great tool to incorporate telemetry into the product. And Splunk can measure a lot of different things, including sending you alerts if things start going a little bit weird with the 
with the product and uh, things are not working. There are errors in production, performance issues, unexpected events, and so on. All these things that could impact the customer experience and their ability to really enjoy the product. So, for example, um, as it is a real, uh, real story, <clears throat> A bank in the U.S., top 10 bank in the U.S., uh, this is, uh, goes back uh, several years ago, was, uh, was late compared to other major banks to the mobile app world, in particular to the mobile deposit feature, the ability to take a photo of the check and then deposit that check into the bank account. At the time, the company didn't have a solution, and it was probably the major, the last remaining major bank not to have a mobile deposit feature. So the bank hired, hired a team, hired the product manager, hired the developing team. They, find, they found a partner, external partner, they provide the technology to support that feature, and they built it. And once it was ready, they launched it in marketplace with the big advertising support behind it and finally celebrating that they were on par with everybody else. Now, in, a, in the hurry to develop this thing, the company did not incorporate any telemetry into the tool. And so did not, nobody really knew whether this thing was working or not, but because we didn't hear any customer complaints, we assumed it was fine. The truth came out about a year later when we used the same technology in a completely different scenario. And that different scenario actually had telemetry incorporated and we realized that the technology we had built had a 15% error rate. Meaning that 15 people out of 100 users actually had the app crash while they were depositing a check. And that certainly was not a happy experience. Now, customers, when an app crashes, they just restart the app and they leave with that. So that's why we didn't hear any feedback. But the, the following project was an internal project. So our employees actually started complaining about it and we realized that we had the problem. And so the company had to scramble to find a different solution, a better solution, rebuild the app, spent six months on doing that, and finally release the new version, which had a much lower error rate, which there is a, a pretty much standard error rate that is uh, is not zero, it's slightly above zero. You, you need to expect some errors to happen anyway, but was much lower than the initial one. So the point is, without telemetry, nobody knew that we were delivering a very poor customer experience despite all the the celebration and so on in building this up. Telemetry is not uh, enough. So for example, <clears throat> things uh, we may want to catch problems even uh, before we make them available in production. So regression testing is actually a great tool. The ability to change code to a website, a digital system, and so on, and then automatically retest everything that we have tested from the beginning of history through today to make sure that everything that we have built in the past still works despite the change that we did today. This is very important because so often we change one piece of the system and then somewhere else, somewhere that we didn't touch at all, that change starts impacting and breaking things up. So regression testing, very, very useful uh, tool. <clears throat> Another problem I often see, and, and this is usually the result of not having telemetry and not doing regression testing on the system, is uh, flow breakpoints. So imagine your uh, customer when they use your product, your service, they go through a journey. They embark on a journey with you, with your product. And the customer journey map 
helps you understand all the different steps and the different activities they, they do with your product and the service when they use it. Now, what happens if at any of these steps, something breaks and the customer is having a poor experience or they actually cannot complete the step and therefore they cannot go forward with the process? Telemetry would provide us real-time use of, uh, of this information and where the user stumbled. And actually, I have a real-life uh, example. This happened to me in uh, March this year. I am, uh, I would say, probably a heavy Kinkos user because for my job, I often do training classes for Agile and uh, product management practices, and I need to print uh, several copies of the uh, student uh, booklets. And I usually do that a couple of days before uh, the class to make sure I have the latest uh, version available. And the Kinkos usually does a great job of printing on time and everything else. Now, what I usually do is uh, I sign up online, I send my PDF file to Kinkos, I ask for 20, 40 copies to be printed, and then I show up the next day and pick them up. In March, the online system broke. You could still upload the PDF file, <clears throat> select all the different options and so on, but when you went to checkout, the actual checkout with the payment stopped working. The flow broke. And the first time it happened to me was, okay, I know that this is something major. They probably realize it very quickly. They will fix it by tomorrow. So I, I went back the same the next day, the problem was still there. Next week, problem was still there. A month later, the problem was still there. At the point I realized, this is so weird. Imagine a company like Kinko's, which I don't know what percentage of revenue they do from online ordering, but they must be major. For a month, their online system was not able to receive any order because somewhere, somehow, someone had broken the flow of the checkout system and nobody had realized it. So I sent, a, I sent an email to the customer support center just letting them know, hey, the checkout is not working, it's been a month now. Just wanted your technical team to know about it so you can fix it. Now, I don't know if they, they it was because, because of me or, or not, hopefully not, they already knew probably about that. But anyway, a couple of weeks later, it started working again. So it took probably six weeks for them to fix the checkout process. Imagine the loss. That's, that's, what, that's what happens when you don't have telemetry or poor telemetry, and you're not able to really catch these problems in time. Another, another topic um, uh, is really dear to me is uh, team empowerment. And uh, I believe the great products are built by great teams. So making sure that the team, the developing team, is empowered to do their best work, to provide ideas, to build with quality and so on, is very, very important. And, uh, and here are a couple of uh, examples. Actually, this is a real story, a team I worked with uh, this, uh, a few months ago. The, the team was uh, struggling to deliver a working product. They, everybody was complaining, the managers, stakeholders, executives were complaining, yet the team was working hard on this product, often over time and so on. And when I started looking at the performance using this tool called the burn down chart, the gray line was the ideal line of work, the ideal progression of work throughout one sprint. And the red line was actually what they did. And you, as you can see, they finished the sprint at, on March 5th, but they didn't finish all the work. And then I started looking at the next sprint, and it was the same story, and then again and again. And this was a clear example of the team overcommitting. Too much work. They were committed to about 58 story points at the beginning of a sprint, and they were able to deliver only 29 story points at the end of the sprint. 
so over committing almost by 2x and they cause several problems of course over time working but also they had to cut corners because they felt pressure from the management to deliver on everything and it was impacting quality and because they had uh, too much work committed to they often were switching from one task to the other so not really finishing anything leaving a lot of things open and slowing everything down so the point is by realizing and these are actually other two examples of uh, of a team that had almost the same problem of over committing and the solution here was very simple i coached the team to do not over commit and to only commit to a very limited amount of work focus on that get it done with the maximum quality and then as soon as that was done take the next chunk of work and so on i don't have uh, screenshots here of uh, the following sprints but, be, but because of that they started trending closer to the gray line and the product quality started improving and so did the management the executives and so on so measuring things even at the team level can be very very important because it can be can have a big big impact on the overall product and the overall project delivery so the question for you is what will you measure tomorrow hopefully i have convinced you enough that we need to have a balance between the business metrics customer metrics and telemetry metrics to really be able to deliver great products that customers love and making sure that we are delivering outcomes to those customers with that i want to thank you for your participation to today's webinar if you want to connect with me uh, here is my linkedin or twitter account and uh, i'm happy to take any questions thank you very much again valerio for your presentation you can post your questions in the Q&A section of the WebEx tool. And I should remind that you can find the recording of this webinar on ASQ Innovation Division YouTube channel. I think there was a question posted uh, regarding this slide number 41. And uh, they ask, what are the titles of the X and Y axis of the burn down chart? 41 okay let me see if i can go back to this line here okay yes <clears throat> can you repeat the question sorry what was the title what are the title of the x and y axis of the baron down chart so the x axis is a uh, time and the y is a uh, story points in this chart shows the progression of work throughout a sprint from uh, looks like from february 21 to march 5th this shows the remaining work that the team has committed to doing so at the beginning they are committed to that amount of work 58 story points ideally on march 5th they would have zero remaining work left if they were following the gray line but of course as i shared they, they were following they, they were not doing that they were they had too much work and they could not deliver everything does it uh, answer the question of course thank you there is an, another question that has been posted uh, do you consider business customer and telemetry measures to be quality measures if not how do they intersect with quality measures oh i think there is a lot of intersection there is a a, a very strong intersection and and uh, one uh, one example is uh, if we are uh, if we are uh, struggling to build the right product uh, we start increasing the pressure on the team on the project team to improve and, and speed up the process build more add new features all these kind of things that customer may want and because of that pressure quality goes down and it's just uh, a a cycle is a negative cycle once we enter that cycle things 
start going down. And the, the big thing that comes out of that is lower quality. And lower quality in the product also means that we may incur in uh, rework, in uh, bug fixes, in uh, re-architecture later on, which as an end result will uh, slow us down even more. And so again, it's a negative cycle. So the point is, we need to, we, we should really approach things in a different way. So we should uh, empower the teams to stick to the, to own their commitment first, that needs to be reasonable and achievable, and stick to their commitment so they can deliver the work. Then we need to understand really what customers need and prioritize their work so we can deliver through MVPs, priorities, and so on, what is really valuable and not too many things that don't make sense. And by keeping this focus, we can deliver a quality product. So lower number of defects, higher customer satisfaction, lower incident of rework and, and defects also, which result in customer satisfaction, in higher revenue, profit margins, and so on. Thank you. You can post your questions in the Q&A section of the WebEx tool. So one question from my side, in the agile methodologies that you mentioned, uh, we are able to measure the success of the product. Uh, is that correct? And, and like, what are the uh, tools for that? A big, uh, a big piece of, uh, a big value that comes from uh, adopting agile practices is uh, the ability to deliver value to the customers frequently and incrementally. So instead of waiting for a long time and building a big thing and then finally launching it in market and hope for the best, in Agile you break down the work in small chunks, deliver that incremental value, measure the outcome with your customers and then iterate on that. And one important uh, piece of that cycle is customer feedback. So making sure that you are able to put the product in the hands of your customers and get feedback from them. Now this feedback can be in many forms, can be in, in verbal forms. So uh, the customers actually use it and they give you verbal feedback. Can be through metrics like the pirate metrics, we actually can look at the funnel and see how things are going. It can be through MVPs based on hypotheses and, and metrics associated to these hypotheses to measure whether we are delivering the outcomes that we expected from that MVP. And of course, can be also based on uh, telemetry, things that we build inside the product to measure all these things. So there are many, many ways to measure feedback from get feedback from the customers and measure the outcomes. All the important here is that we want to do that as frequently as possible. This should be a continuous process of measurement and validation and not wait just to the end when the product is finally available in the market. Thank you so much. So we have uh, five more minutes if you want to post your questions in the Q&A section. We have 
still a few minutes to ask whether you to answer that. Yeah, I don't see the chat window, so I don't know <clears throat> what's going on in there. So thank you for uh, sharing the questions with me. You're welcome. Uh, I think there was an answer for your first questions in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, what is the product? And the like, uh, one person answered reliable, something you can tell your friends about. Awesome. Yes. And reliability goes a long way with uh, quality, which is a built-in quality, but also perceived quality. If there is no more questions, I guess we can uh, end this webinar event. Thank you so much, Valerio, uh, for accepting to be our speaker today. And thank you all again for joining this webinar. And have a good evening. Thank you all for being here with me today. Thank you.